Okay, so this is the overall view of AES. Uh, we have uh, the input, which is 128-bit uh, plain text block. It goes through um, uh, a sequence of rounds. So before, uh, for encryption, before you begin the round, uh, you do an XOR with the round key. And then uh, you go through the 10 rounds. So this is assuming the key size is 128-bit. Okay. So if the key size is 128 bit. We already saw that the uh, key is expanded into uh, um, a 44 word uh, sequence. So the uh, first four words are used for the XOR operation, uh, the initial XOR operation with the plain text block, and then the subsequent words are used with in the subsequent rounds. Now. Uh, for decryption, uh, use the last four words uh, to XOR with the ciphertext block and then use the uh, previous words in from rounds 1 to 10. Uh, so in each round, uh, we have these four steps, uh, which is basically the substitute byte step, the shifting row step, and mixing column step, and the add uh, or the XOR operation with the round key. The substitute byte step basically uh, does uh, some substitution. So each byte in the uh, state array uh, is substituted. Uh, and then the shift rows and mixed column step basically do the diffusion. Now, uh, for decryption, we have equivalent steps like substitute bytes. We have something called inverse substitute bytes, shifting rows. We have inverse shift rows, mixed columns. We have inverse mixed columns. Now this is the order in which these steps are done in the encryption round and this is the order in which these steps are done in the decryption round. And of course in the last round of encryption we do not have the mixed column step and for the last round of decryption we do not have the inverse mixed column step. Again when I say last round it means round 10 here for encryption and round 10 here for decryption. Now, again, um, uh, just to uh, uh, remember what we talk, uh, what we mean by state array. Uh, so, for every round, uh, we input what is called uh, a state array and uh, input state array, uh, uh, and then all get an output state array. So, uh, the uh, plain text block, which is like 128 bit, is the initial state array and then it goes through the uh, XOR operation and then fed into round one. So for each round we call things as state array, input state array and output state array. So it is 128 bit state array and uh, broken down as a four by four matrix and uh, each entry in that matrix is a byte. So there are 16 bytes, 16 times eight is 128 bits. Now the bytes are arranged in this matrix in uh, column major order. So it's like the first column has the first four bytes and then we have the next four bytes and so on. So we have a quantity called word that indicates four bytes, which is 32 bits. So each column is a word. Um, um, and we talked about key expansion in the earlier video. So now let's focus more on the uh, steps, which is substitute byte step and the inverse substitute byte step. So basically, in the substitute byte step, you take a byte in the um, in the state array and uh, use a lookup table to replace that byte with um, another byte. Uh, so it's a byte. So the values, uh, the integer values of the uh, elements in the byte uh, will range from 0 to 255. So this is a decimal version of the lookup table. Uh, <coughs> so what we'll do is we'll break that byte that we want to substitute, uh, which is 8 bits, into two 4-bit quantities. We use the first 4 bits of the byte as a row index and the second 4-bit of the byte, which each 4-bit quantity is called nibble. So the second 4-bit nibble will be used as a column index for the lookup table. So it's more easy to look at the hexadecimal version of the substitute byte. So this is like the first 4-bit uh, converted in hexadecimal and this is the uh, second 4-bit in hexadecimal. So for example, if I want to replace like I have in your um, question bank, so this is like a state array. So if I want to replace this byte 41 
uh, we just look look up the table and for one so this is four and one so I'm going to replace it with eight three so if uh, it's going to be like say nine C uh, then all I have to do is look into this table where nine is nine is here and C is all the way here so it's going to be D E that's how I'm going to replace this so we'll just index uh, the first four bits as the row index and the next four bits of the byte as the column index in hexadecimal and that will get you the uh, substitution value. The same technique you can use for the inverse sub uh, bytes lookup table for decryption. Again you have hexadecimal version of it to make it easy. Then the shift row step uh, which is uh, basically doing a kind of like scrambling so moving around the bytes so that um, they get dispersed or diffused throughout the matrix so the way it is done it's for encryption uh, it's called the shift rows operation and for decryption it's called the inverse shift rows operation so um, uh, for the shift rows transformation uh, the first byte is the first row basically is not shifted the second row each byte is shifted one byte to the left so which means this s10 is going to go to s uh, is going to wrap around so it's, it's going to shift to the left so it's going to come here s11 is going to come here s12 is going to come here s13 is going to come here okay then the third row each byte is shifted uh, two bytes to the left so s23 is going to come here S22 is going to come here, S21 is going to wrap around one byte and then it's going to here be here, S20 is going to wrap around so this is one byte and this is two bytes so that's S20. Then the fourth row is going to be shifted three bytes to the left so S33 is going to come here, S32 is going to wrap around one, two, three byte and then S31 is going to one, two, three, that's S31 and S30 is going to wrap around, this is one, two, three, that is S30. Okay, so that is how things uh, are done for encryption. Um, <coughs> now for decryption, uh, we do it as what is called the inverse shift row step. Uh, again, um, here the first row is not shifted um, so here the second row uh, basically the rows are shifted to the right so the second row is shifted one byte to the right so s10 is going to go to the right s11 to the right and so on uh, the third row is shifted two bytes to the right so s20 has come here s21 is going to come here s22 is like going here and wrap around and it will be here the fourth row is shifted three bytes to the right, so S30 is going to come here, S31 is going to come here, S32 is going to go and wrap around and be here. So basically in inverse shift rows you are going to shift to the right and in uh, just in the shift rows you are going to shift to the left. So as you can see here if this is uh, the uh, straight array before the shift row, uh, S00 is, all, is here but S10 is going somewhere here. S20 is going somewhere here, S30 is going somewhere here. So the bytes in one column are basically now diffused or spread to all the four columns. Okay, so similarly S01 is still here, but S11 is moved to the first column, S21 is moved to the fourth column, S31 is moved to the third column. So uh, the columns of uh, the, so the bytes of a particular column in the uh, input state array or whatever the state array before the shift row are basically diffused through to or scrambled to all the four columns. Okay, same thing we do with the inverse shift row also. Okay, so like S00 is still here, but S10 is now here, S20 is now here, S30 is now here. So that's what we do in the shift row case. Uh, so now the mixing column steps, um, so that's the third step. Here we basically again uh, replace each byte of a column by a function uh, that takes into consideration all the bytes in the same column. Okay. So to do that what we basically do is we 
uh, use this kind of a fixed matrix uh, containing these entries in hexadecimal and multiply that with a state array okay what are the state array before that uh, mixed call step uh, for that round and um, so we do the same thing with de for decryption we use another matrix which is for the inverse column step this is again a fixed matrix used in every round okay so the multiplication is similar to what we do for the decimals but we have to do it in what is called this uh, gf to, uh, to the eighth arithmetic this is like called the finite field or Galois field arithmetic i'll go through this uh, immediately but so basically it's going to be like this 0 2 times this s 0 0 so if I want to determine this entry in the product matrix this particular element and this column so basically I'm going to take the first row multiply with the first column so 0 2 times s 0 0 plus 0 3 times s 1 0 plus 0 1 times s 2 0 plus 0 1 times s 3 0 so that's a regular multiplication that we do to get this element here in the first row and first column. I'm going to take basically multiply the elements in the first row and the first column. Now to get the elements in the first row second column like S01, I'm going to take the first row elements and multiply with the second column elements. So it's going to be like 02 times S01 plus 03 times S11 plus 01 times S21 plus 01 times S31. Now similarly if I want to get the element in the second row first column, I take the second row multiply with the first column. Okay. If I want to get the elements in the second row third column, take the second row and multiply with the elements in the third column. Okay. So that's what we do for the normal multiplication. Now, before we do the multiplication and addition, let's uh, try to uh, go through this uh, background information about what's called this finite field arithmetic. It's also called the Galois field arithmetic and it uses uh, like the two to the power eight as a kind of a modular value. So basically all the values will work out, will be in the range of zero to 255 in decimal and we'll basically also use the uh, represent those values in hexadecimal so just again hexadecimal takes four bits so a byte will be basically broken down into two hexadecimal values now another thing here is we will represent each binary string uh, as a polynomial uh, so if you take a byte like this uh, this is like the least significant bit of the byte. This is the most significant bit. So the degree of the uh, x terms will increase from the least significant to the most significant bit. So there is, this is like x to the zero, which is one, but this is like zero times x to the zero because this bit value is zero, plus one times x to the one, so that is x, plus one times x square, so that's why it's x square plus 0 times x cube so that's why there's no x cube term and um, 1 times x to the power 4 so that is x to the power 4 1 times x to the 5 which is x to the 5 0 times x to the 6 so that's why it's 0 and 0 times x to the 7 it is 0 similarly here um, we can go from 1 times x to the 0 which is 1 plus 1 times x to the 1 which is x plus 0 times x to the 2 which is 0, 0 times x to the 3 which is 0, 1 times x to the 4 which is this, uh, 0 times x to the 5 which is 0, 0 times x to the 6 is 0, 1 times x to the 7 which is x to the 7. So that's how we represent a binary string as a polynomial. Now when we do the addition it is basically an XOR operation. Uh, we'll see what is multiplication later. Uh, after this but what is for addition is basically doing an XOR operation so if I want to do um, an addition with this two hexadecimal bytes 3 6 which is a byte and 9 3 is a byte so 3 6 I'm going to write it as 4 4 bit quantity so 3 uh, in hexadecimal uh, is like 0 0 1 1 in binary okay and uh, because this is like 1 plus 2 now 6 is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0, which is like 1, 2, 4, 8, so 2 plus 4 is 6. 
9 is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. In binary, 3 is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, I basically write these as uh, a polynomial. So, actually, this is like x to the uh, 5 because uh, this is in binary. So, it's x to the 7, x to the 6, x to the 5, x to the 4 x cube term is 0, x square and x and uh, the one term is also 0 which is this basically this polynomial and for this it's like x to the 7 plus x to the 6 is 0, x to the um, 5 is 0 so it's x to the 4, x cube and x square terms are also 0 plus x plus 1. So uh, it's just like doing an XOR operation for XOR operation we know if there's an x term it means uh, the original bit is 1 so 1 plus 1 which is like 1 x odd with 1 is 0 so if I have for any exponent i x to the i plus another x to the i is 0 so they basically kind of cancel out so we have here the two x terms cancelling out the x to the 4 terms cancelling out so we have left with x to the phi plus x square plus x to the 7 plus 1 so if you rearrange them in the increasing or uh, from the in the decreasing order sorry from the highest degree so it's x to the 7 plus x to the 5 plus x square plus 1 so if I write that in binary uh, this is like 1 uh, the x to the 6 term is 0 x to the 5 is 1 and x to the 4 term is 0 x cube term is 0 x square term is 1 x term is 0 and this is the 1 so this is the 8-bit quantity and if you write this in hexadecimal 4-4 four, four bits these 4 bits is like 1, uh, 2, 4, 8 so 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 is A in hexadecimal and this is like 1, 2, 4, uh, 8 again so 1 plus, uh, sorry 4 plus 1 is 5 so that is 5 so 3, 6 plus 9, 3 is essentially A5 in this finite field arithmetic Okay. Now let's do the multiplication. So we'll take the same 3, 6 and 9, 3. This is what they are in binary and then this is in the polynomial form. So uh, when you have things like this, you do basically the term by term multiplication. So this is like x to the 5 plus x to the 7 which is x to the 12 plus x to the 5 plus x to the 4 is x to the 9. x to the 5 plus x is x to the 6 x to the 5 plus uh, 1 is x to the 5 so same thing x to the 4 plus x to the 7 is x to the 11 x to the 4 plus x to the 4 is x to the 8 so that's straightforward multiplication and now if there are two uh, xi terms you can basically cancel them out so this x to the 9 cancels out with this x to the 9 x to the 6 cancels out with this x to the 6 x to the 5 cancels out with this x to the 5 x to the 8 cancels out with this x to the 8, x square cancels out with this x square. So we are left with like the only one term, uh, appearance of each of these terms x to the 12 plus x to the 11 plus sorry, uh, x to the 5 plus x to the 4 plus x cube plus x. So if you write this in binary, this is going to be starting from the highest degree. So this is for 12, this is for 11. There's no 10 term, so it's 0, 9 is 0, 8 uh, degree 0, 7 is 0, 6 is 0. For 5, there is a 1. 4, there is a 1. X cubed, there is 1. There's no x square, so it is 0. X, there's a 1. And there's no the constant 1 term, so it is 0. Now, again, uh, the degree of the resulting polynomial should not exceed 7 because we are dealing with the 2 to the 8th arithmetic, so the degree can be only of the polynomial can be only at most 7. So, uh, we have to basically do some reduction. So, what we do is we will use a general polynomial which is x to the 8 plus x to the 4 plus x cubed plus x plus 1. This is the polynomial that we use for reduction in this always all the time when something like when you do the product and it exceeds the degree of the resulting polynomial exceeds 7 you will always try to do this what is called reduction with this polynomial and this polynomial x to the 8 plus x to the 4 x cubed plus x plus 1 in binary is going to be like 1 plus x to the 7 term is 0 x to the 6 term is 0 x to the 5 term is 0 this is 4 3 2 1 and 1 x to the 1 now 
we are going to do what is called an XOR division. So basically, take up this um, uh, the product uh, that you get out of this uh, and uh, do an XOR division, which is quite easy. So all you have to do is fill it up like this and do a bit by bit uh, XOR operation. One XOR with one is zero. So when you get a leading zero, we can just omit them. So 1 XOR with 0 is 1, 0 XOR with 0 is 0, 0 XOR with 0 is 0, 0 XOR with 1 is 1, 0 XOR with 1 is 1, 0 XOR with 0, 1 XOR with 1 is 0, 1 XOR with 1 is 0. And we have like here 9 bits, so we need 9 bits to continue the division. So I uh, bring down this 1 and I can put this thing again here and I do a bitwise XOR. Again, you can omit the leading zeros. 1 XOR with 1 is 0, 0 XOR with 0 is 0, 0 XOR with 0, 0. So we start with here. 1 XOR with 0 is 1. 1 XOR with 1 is 0. 0 XOR with 1 is 1. 0 with 0 is 0. 0 with 1 is 1. 1 with 1 is 0. So we need again 9 bits. So I'm going to bring down these uh, 3 bits. So that will make again this 9 bits. So again, like 1 XOR with 0 is 1, 0 with 0, 0, 1 XOR with 1 is 0, 1, 0 with 1 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 XOR with 1 is 0, 0 XOR with 1 is 1. Now we need the answer in 8 bits because you can represent it as a byte, right? So we're going to basically uh, replace when we do the multiplication and all these things, eventually you're going to get a, need a byte. So we'll prefix some zeros to make it like sufficiently long uh, for eight bits. So here we have seven bits. So I can put a zero in the beginning as a, uh, as a prefix. Uh, so we have two four bit quantities. So zero one zero zero is four one zero zero one is nine. Okay, so basically now the product is going to be four nine. Uh, <coughs> so again, uh, if people are not familiar with uh, the uh, exponents of 2, so if I have like assume everybody knows the binary thing but in case things are not familiar so exponents of 2 are like this so if I want to represent say something like um, echo, uh, actually we don't need to uh, go through the 8 bits because we work in hexadecimals so if I want to represent something like 12 which is C in hexadecimal all I need to do is uh, fit that uh, into this 4 bit quantity so this is 1010 zero, one, zero. So basically the value for this bit is 2, the value for this bit is 1, the value for this bit is 4 and this is 8. So it's like 0 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 0 times 4 plus 1 times 8 which is 12. So again something like if you have 5 is going to be 0, 1, 0 and 1. That's how we can write 5. So again, the way you fill it up is like a greedy approach. So if I have say nine, I can fit nine uh, with an eight. So that's a one. So the balance is just one. So this has to be have to be zero, and this is just a one. So one zero zero one is going to be nine. Okay. So let us uh, now continue. So another example for finite field arithmetic multiplication, I have in hexadecimal 53, which is a byte together, and CA in hexadecimal, which is a byte together. So phi in binary is going to be 0101, which is in 4 bits. 3 in binary is going to be 0011. C is like 12, which is source, so that is 1100. A is 10, which is going to be 1010. 
So now we write this as a polynomial. This is the x to the seventh term, which is zero. So it is x to the six plus x to the four plus x plus one. And this is x to the seven plus x to the six plus this is x to the five, x to the four, x cubed plus x squared term is zero plus x. So now we do a simple term by term multiplication and if the terms are repeating, we can cancel them out. So for example, x to the seven cancels out with this x to the seven. Another x to the seven cancels out with this x to the seven. The other terms don't cancel at all. So we have a very long polynomial and that written in binary is going to be x cubed, x to, sorry, x to the 13, this is a one x to the 12, x to the 11, x to the 10, x to the 9, x to the 8, there's no x to the 7, so it is a 0, x to the 6, x to the 5, x to the 4, x to the 3, x to the 2, x to the 1, and that is a 0 because there's no constant term. So we need to bring it back to 8-bit um, uh, quantity, so we basically do this division with this um, reducing polynomial, the same thing that we used before. That is a fixed one, so always use this reducing polynomial. So that is x to 8 plus x to 4 plus x cubed plus x plus 1. So that is this. And this is a simple XOR division. So we have the uh, what we have here. And uh, so we put this 9 bits. So it's a bit by bit XOR. So we can omit the leading zeros. 1 XOR with 1 is 0. 1 x odd with 0 is 1, 1 x odd is 0 is this one, 1 with 0 is this one, and so on. And uh, we bring down one more bit to make it like 9 bits, and we can put these 9 bits here and continue this x odd operation. And we can bring this one down, and that will make it 9 bit, and again continue, and now another 1 bit, and make it this. And with this 9 bits, it's going to be like 1 x to 0 is 1, 0 with 0 is 0, 1 with 1 is 0, 1 with 1 is 0, and so on. So we have only 7 bits here, so we bring down these 2 bits and make it 9 bits, and that will make it like just, obviously, if you see, look at this, this is like all the same bits, so it's like 0, 0, 0, 0, until you have 0, 1, which is 1. So in order to make it a byte, we need to prefix with 7 zeros. Uh, so that's going to be this these four bits is a zero and these four bits is a one in hexadecimal so we have five three times c a in this finite field arithmetic is basically zero one so now we'll basically uh, use all this knowledge to do to see how we do this AES column multiplication so what I'm going to illustrate is um, uh, take up this uh, matrix and this is our state matrix right so I'm going to just take one column and uh, uh, so I can say this is the first column and or this is the second column or the third column or the fourth column so in an exam I'll tell you I agree the state matrix I'll tell you uh, show some the multiplications for the second column or the third column or the mixing columns for the first column or the second column you have to show the multiplications or the, that's that's what is meant by mixed columns okay so you show the multiplication for the corresponding column so if I tell the first column then just take up that column so that's what I have it here this is one of the columns so let's assume this is the first column okay so that's an implicit assumption here um, I didn't specify let's let me add it assume uh, the column uh, used is the first column of the state matrix. Okay. Okay. So that's why if you if you use the first column of the state matrix. So I want to get essentially, uh, of course here there's only one column, so there's no confusion. So I want to get the product, which is like, uh, so this is going to be the first row, first column. So this is the first row and this is the first column. If I want to get this, this is the second row, first column. So that we have to do second row, first column. If you want to get this, it's going to be 
third row first column so third row first column then fourth row first column so multiply fourth row first column so if you want to show how you get the 0 4 you have to multiply uh, this is like first row first column right so you have to multiply the first row with the first column so this is going to be like 0 2 times d4 plus 0 3 times bf plus 0 1 times phi d plus 0 1 times 3 0 so now these are all hexadecimal values so we'll expand it out in binary so each is like a four bit quantity so zero is four zeros two is zero zero one zero times d4 d is like uh, 13 so this is one one zero one four is like zero one zero zero plus the same thing with zero three times bf zero is this four zeros 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. B is like 11, so that is 1, 0, 1, 1 in binary. F is 15, so it is all 1s. So you do that same thing with 0, 1 times 5D. So this is 0, 1 times 5D plus 0, 1 times 3, 0. So here I ex basically expand these terms into polynomials. So this term is essentially x. This term is essentially x this term is going to be x to the 7 plus x to the 6 there's no x to the 5 plus x to the 4 x cube is 0 so x square and other terms are 0 now this term is going to be essentially x plus 1 so x plus 1 and this is x to the 7 again plus x to the 5 plus x to the 4 plus x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 this term is again there's only a constant 1 plus x to the 6 plus x to the 4 plus x cube plus x plus uh, so x cube plus x squared plus there's no x term here plus 1 and this is again a 1 plus x to the 5 plus x to the 4 and these are all zeros so you do the term by term multiplication and uh, just this is just to make it easy to see what are the common terms so it's easy to cancel so you don't need to write it out like this so you can do like what I did in the in the in here but if it would just make it easy to cancel out terms you can write it out like this so x to the 8 is this plus x to the 7 plus x to the 5 so there's no x to the 6 term so you leave out a space then x to the 3 term so it's like x to the 4 plus and x to to the 3 so you leave out a space so then this is like x times x to the 7 x to the 8 plus x times x to the 5 is x to the 6 x times x to the 4 is x to the 5 and so on then again this one term times x to the 7 is x to the 7 1 times x to the 5 is this 1 times x to the 4 is this 1 times x to the cube is this and so on so these are all now um, xr so this x to the 8 and x to the 8 can really cancel out and then x to the 7 and x to the 7 can cancel out x to the 6 and x to the 6 can cancel out and all these 4 x to the 5 can cancel out these 4 can cancel out these 4 can cancel out and these only 2 x squares that can cancel out so this x square remains and then the x terms cancel out and the 1 cancel out so it's only simply x square and if you write it out this is what is x square right so you have to get uh, 8 bits so these 4 bits make a 0 these 4 bits make 4 so the that's why the product is like 0 4 now another example so I want to show this is like 6 6 okay so this is like first row uh, sorry second row right so this is second row first column so if I want to get the product for the second row first column I have to show take the second row multiply with the first column so second row is going to be 0 1 times d4 plus 0 2 times bf and 0 3 times 5d plus 0 1 times 3 0 so similarly expand each of these in hexadecimal now which into binary so 0 is 4 zeros 1 is the 0 0 0 1 D is like 13, so it's 1, 1, 0, 1, 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So that is this term. Now this 0, 2 times BF, so 0 is this, 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. B is like what, 11? So 11 is 1, 0, 1, 1. F is again 1, 1, 1, 1. So you can do the same thing for 0, 3 
times 5d 0 1 times 3 0 so now write each of them as a polynomial so this is simply a 1 times this x to the 7 plus x to the 6 plus x to the 4 plus x square and then this is x term because there's no other constant here so this is x to the 7 plus x to the 5 plus x to the 4 plus x cubed plus x square plus x plus 1 this is x plus 1 times this polynomial there's no x to the 7 term but there's an x to the 6 plus x to the 5 is not there but x to the 4 and so on and this is like 1 times x to the 5 plus x to the 4 and again do the term wise multiplication and you can rearrange them like this so you can cancel out whatever is left over like pairs so x to the 7 cancels x to the 7 x to the 6 with this x to the 6 x to the 5 with this and x to the 4 like this and so on and you're left with things like this again this is uh, greater than 7 the deg degree so in binary this is going to be 1 0 for x to the 7 term and then 1 1 1 1 1 and the 0 for x term and then 1 so you do the division with the same reduction polynomial and this is uh, again this is also 9 bits so it's going to be a simple 9 bit 9 bit xor this is going to be 1 xor 0 is 1 and so on and again this is just 7 bits so we prefix that with a 0 that makes it 0 1 1 0 and then 0 1 1 0 that is 6 6 and that's what we have here okay so this is the um, mixed column step and we do the same thing with the inverse mixed column step the only thing is we use this matrix instead of this so these are three main sub steps of this AES uh, and of course the last step is going to be uh, the XOR operation with the round key so the round key is going to be 128 bits or four words for each round so in summary what is the difference what are the main differences between AES and DES with respect to input processing in DES case we are going to break the 64 bit block into essentially two halves each is 32 bit that's what we did and uh, we will process them separately using the feastel network of course both 32 bits going to that feastel network both the 32 bit quantities going to the feastel network and we get the two 32 bit quantities and uh, we repeat that for each round and then we merge the two 32 bit quantities and do a final permutation so we break it out, that break the input into two sub halves basically and process them for each round. Whereas in AES we didn't break them, we just um, pass the whole 128 bit block to each round. So that's what we do with respect to input processing uh, in AES. <coughs> mm. Now with respect to encryption and decryption with DES, uh, uh, we use the same feastel network for both encryption and decryption. So what I mean by that is, <coughs> so if you look at how decryption is done, or basically this is a feastel network, right? So we feed in uh, the left half of the earlier round and the right half of the earlier round and get the left half of the new round or next round and the right half for the next round. For decryption, we feed in the right half here and we feed in the left half here, but this left half that you feed in is basically the right half for the previous round. So that is going through this feastel network with the same process and whatever comes out here, we XOR with this right half and we get this left half. So there is no separate kind of uh, processing or even the order in which things are processed there is no nothing for decryption it's the same crystal network that is used for both encryption and decryption so again this left half that you feed in from as, for, as, a, as part of decryption goes above as the right half here of the previous round and goes to the feastel network and when it comes here you do the XOR with this right half and whatever comes out here is your left half okay whereas in AES it is very obvious that um, we have a different uh, order in which we process the uh, 
state array for encryption and for decryption. Now, with respect to uh, changing the bits, uh, with DES, if you change one bit in the plain text, on average, it affects 31 bit uh, positions in the cipher text. So, if I change, say, one bit in the plain text from a 1 to 0, or whatever its value is, we change it from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, on average, uh, the values of the bits, and uh, because DES is what, 64 bit? Uh, plain text block and 64 bit cipher text block. So, on average, about half of the cipher text block bits change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 from what they're supposed to be. On the other hand, with AES, even if I change one bit in the plain text, basically the cipher text uh, block 128 bits, all the bits values are affected. Okay, so zeros change to 1 and 1s change to 0. So the effect is more prominent with AES. So we'll stop here.